Hello, welcome this June 19th, 2022. It is a Sunday, so you know what that means. It's another episode of Misfits of the Galaxy, my vlog series where I go through my thought process as I ramble and amble about ideas I have for a campaign I want to run for my fellow members of the Isle of Misfit Rules podcast. If you haven't heard of us before, I'll put links down below. Uh, we have currently transitioned over to a Twitch live stream format, so now you have multiple options as to how you wish to listen to our uh, content. Normally we are playing every Tuesday between 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, typical to about 11 o'clock to 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. So if you are interested in joining us for like a two to three hour uh, go, it's a lot of fun. We're in season two right now and uh, the stakes are ramping up to say the very least. So with that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. So, uh, today I'm going to discuss familiars. Uh, they've always been near and dear to my heart ever since I started playing D&D, and they were introduced, um, and I think it was in AD&D 2nd Edition they were introduced first and foremost. I'm not exactly 100% certain on that, so don't quote me on it. I know that, um... It wasn't in the core uh, red box back in the heyday for D&D, and I think my first introduction to them actually was in um, a D&D second edition of all things. I like the first time I had one as a uh, as a wizard or a magic user, I should say. Um, additionally, uh, like. Well, there was brief mention of it, I think, in the Mistara campaign setting books for, uh, like, Back and Back Me, which uh, I know that a lot of people won't catch that reference, but what Back Me is, it's effectively, um, before Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, they had a bunch of box sets, and it was basic, expert, I think it was, meh, um, companion, uh, master, immortal. I hope I got those right. <laughs> Anyways, I'm digressing. i uh, feeling a bit nostalgic today. So, one of the things I've noticed uh, with D&D in particular, uh, like, like the 5th edition, is uh, they have taken both, uh, they have taken the uh, ranger and they have uh, put variant rules for the beastmaster because it was very undervalued in uh, the the core player's handbook, and so they did a variant of it in Tasha's uh, Cauldron of Everything. Additionally, uh, if you look at the uh, artificer, as well as some of the new uh, new. Uh, like subclasses for the druid and what have you, uh, they, they've clearly ramped up the animal companion, or in the case of the artificer, the uh, battlesmith's um, steel steel defender. Uh, in comparison to what was initially available in the PHB for uh, certain subclasses and the like, and one of the subclasses that still hasn't been fixed is, of course, the uh, Warlock Pact of the Chain. Uh, considering your options are between an Imp, a Pseudo-Dragon, a Quasit, or a Sprite, and they didn't change the, any of the mechanics between the Find Familiar spell and those, for all intents and purposes, um, you're fi you'll find yourself in, in a world of hurt at higher levels with these, uh, with these creatures, right? Uh, as they don't level up, they don't p gain more power or anything like that. Additionally, uh, the there's an infusion now, uh, like for the homunculus, which is considerably more more powerful than the fine familiar spell in the wizard's list, which, in my opinion. It, that's a balancing problem. Like they, they clearly made these, uh, made the homunculus supposed to be on par with a wizard's familiar, but then they just ramped it up 
per se. And uh, I don't like that at all. I like, personally, like, I, I liked it when, like, in in second edition AD&D, as well as 3.5, and what have you, I liked the familiars back then a lot more than what I like, what, what's a, what, what I like about the ones that are currently available. <laughs> I'm rambling a bit. But anyways, so what I've done is I've revamped the familiar rules uh, as house rules uh, for the Misfits of the Galaxy setting, and I thought I would list them out right now. First off, I'm adding a few familiars to the uh, the basic fine familiar spell. I'm adding the Al Mirage, which is the uh, rabbit with the little unicorn horn on top of it that's found in Tomb of Annihilation, as well as the Cranium Rats, which uh, were originally in Volo's Guide to Monsters, but now are in Mordecai and Presents Monsters of the Multiverse. Uh, the Crawling Hand from the Monster Manual, because necromancers need a really cool familiar if they want it. Flying monkeys from Tomb of Annihilation and the Tresemane, or the Tresim, my, my mistake. I hope I pronounced that right. The flying cats of uh, that were found in Storm King's Thunder. These have all been added to the basic list. Uh, so, first things first. the You get the stat block of the creature, as is, uh, regardless as to which one you select, the hit points are changed. I'm going with hit points similar to that of the Homunculus uh, for the Artificer, which is 1 plus your Intelligence modifier, and you, it gains an additional 1 every wizard level you have. So, in theory, if you don't get any sort of uh, tomes or, or other effects that allow you to boost your, your intelligence beyond 20, a 20th level wizard can have, in theory, a familiar with 26 hit points. It's not that tough at level 20, but uh, it's still an extremely squishy creature, but at least it's not just dying instantly upon taking one point of damage, like the ones are currently. Uh, I beefed up their uh, statistics slightly as well. Uh, any uh, any skills or saving throws that are lo that are listed in the stat block, which are the ones that the creature is proficient in, obviously, get your get to add your proficiency bonus to it. Uh, now. So they are actually even more skilled and have better saves. Uh, Additionally, uh, I, I did, or an addendum to that, I may tweak that slightly so that, uh, like, like I'll r minus two to the stat, uh, the saving throw and uh, and the skills on the simple grounds as that would balance it out rather than doubling the proficiency bonus. Although giving them expertise in these things are, is not over the top by any stretch of the imagination. So, they gain the feature of evasion. Uh, the last thing I want to see is a fireball dropped on top, like, like dropped uh, on onto the battlefield and vaporizing a familiar instantaneously. I just don't think that's fair. Uh, so, they now have the evasion feature, so if they succeed in a... Uh, a a, save, a dexterity based saving throw that halves the damage it, they take none they're small, they're itty bitty critters they're more likely to be able to avoid the damage they are also now capable of performing any actions that are listed in their stat block because one of the things that I, I, don't quote me on this but one of the things in the Find Familiar spell is they cannot attack well, now they can attack uh, using their like claws, their teeth, their stingers, whatever they have, right? If they have an attack. And it still just does whatever damage it is, which is normally just one point of damage. whoop de doo sir, <laughs> the deal. But, in addition to that, uh, they get your proficiency bonus added to their, bon uh, to their uh, attacks. So... That means that they're more likely to be able to hit a target, which is pretty handy uh, for these critters. So, uh, the big advantages, uh, th those are a whole bunch of advantages to them, but the 
big advantage I've put, uh, the slash bombshell I've dropped on top of them is they are now capable of maintaining concentration uh, of a spell for you. Yeah, that's a huge thing. It's uh, what happened, a wizard or any, like somebody who has like, uh, an ability to gain a wizard, uh, wiz the wizard's find familiar spell, can now use a standard action to move the concentration of a spell that they have, uh, that they're currently concentrating, over to a familiar who will now maintain the concentration for them, which allows the which frees up the wizard to add, like have another concentration spell going. If the wizard, if the familiar already has a, a concentration spell, and the wizard goes to move another spell to them, that spell is clearly lost, and it functions in the same way as your uh, run of the will concentration. Uh, if the if, if they're rendered unconscious, uh, they lose uh, concentration. Also, if they take damage, they need to make the uh, Constitution saving throw as uh, as per normal uh in, in order to ensure that the uh the spell either may is maintained in concentration or fails and the spell fizzles out so that's a big thing the con uh in order to sort of balance that out uh and with all these additional features i've added to them uh there is now fee uh sort of psychic feedback when your familiar dies if your familiar is reduced to zero hit points, it dies. It's just dead at that point. Um, any excess damage beyond what it's taking uh, is carried over to the cat to, to its owner as psychic damage. So, for example, you have a familiar. It's it. It doesn't matter what type it is. It gets blasted for twenty two points of damage. It only has eight hit points. That would mean that it goes down to zero, it dies, and you then proceed to take 14 carryover damage as psychic damage, and it is inflicted on the, the person who, that has the familiar. This will make it. This will make casters far more protective of their familiars, obviously. Additionally, the cost for casting the Find Familiar spell has now gone up from its previous amount of 10 gold pieces in charcoal, incense, rare herbs, and the like being burned in a brazier to 100 gold pieces. This is, to, this is clearly because the spell is obviously more powerful now. And I'm hoping that these new effects attached to the Find Familiar spell will encourage people to have them, as well as protect them and not use them as cannon, like like, uh, like cannon fodder and scouts as frequently. It's great to have like a, a rat that can scout things out for you, but it's terrifying if you know that if that rat dies, you're going to take a, a chunk of damage for it. <laughs> which might actually knock you unconscious and start making you make death saves very quickly. So, uh, that's the standard Find Familiar spell. The Pact of the Chain has a few different rules to it. Uh, the, the first is, of course, with the you have your standard Imp, Pseudo Dragon, Quasit, and Sprite amongst the list. Additionally, I've added the Gazer from... Uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters, also Mordenkainen's, uh, Mordenkainen Presents Monsters in the Multiverse. It's been added to the list because I think it works great with the Great Old One, per se. Um, this is more like a Steel Defender in the sense that your familiar starts with two hit points instead of the one from the, from the, uh, the previous spell, plus your Charisma modifier, because this is for a Warlock, and it gains five hit points for every warlock level you have. So they're a lot beefier than your standard find familiar spell, clearly. You add your uh, your proficiency bonus to 
any saving throws and skills, just like the previous one, to uh, that are in that stat block, because those are the ones it's proficient in. And I'm, the more I think about it, them having expertise in it kind of makes sense. Um, they gain the evasion feature, just like the other familiars. If it is ca- any actions it's capable of performing, so this includes spells, poisons, you name it, in its stat block, it can do it. So it can attack and everything. With these, you add your proficiency bonus to its rules to hit, as well as damage. So as you get go up in levels, there will be a slight increase in the amount of damage creatures like an imp or a pseudo-dragon from Pact of the Chain are capable of performing. Um, final, uh, finally, it has the concentration ability of the, uh, the Find Familiar spell, where it can maintain the concentration of a spell for you. And uh, you can move as a stand. It's a move as a standard action from you from from you to the familiar. That all sounds good and handy dandy. Uh, it does not have the additional cost associated with it, so it's still ten gold pieces in uh, materials. Uh, this the reason I thought I decided to leave that there is. Because a warlock with Pact of the Chain, it's your patron you're beseeching for the familiar, rather than trying to bind a, uh, a animal to you or what have you. So your patron is, in a sense, uh, care, like paying much of the cost for said, uh, said, effect, uh, said familiar to be created or summoned on your behalf. Additionally, I am... I, I think I'm going to leave the psychic feedback on it. I haven't decided. I'd love to hear what people think about putting the psychic damage on the um, uh, on the Pact of the Chain, just like the standard familiar spell. At the moment, I've left it off, but like I said, I'm thinking about putting it on. I'm thinking it's, it might be a good idea just to discourage people from saying, okay, 10 gold pieces, I get this really beefy, uh, b- beefy familiar that can somewhat tank for me in a manner of speaking so those are the familiar mechanics i'm uh, throwing in there uh they're no longer spirits per se they are beasts and other de- other creatures who have uh have been transformed into uh, either a celestial a fiend or a fey depending on um depending on the uh, nature of the caster and the summoning for the fine familiar. Additionally, because they're no longer spirits, that means if a wizard dies or a warlock dies, uh, they don't necessarily go away. Uh, And that brings me to the uh, second topic of uh, this evening. A new uh, faction known as the Freed Ones uh, in uh, Misfits of the Galaxy. I've only started working with it right now. Um, I, I, I got, I, I apologize for uh, stuttering there. I saw the idea in another setting. I'll have to figure out which one it is and mention it in the next vlog. If I recall, if I recall it, but the idea behind the freed ones is these, uh, it's a faction where exclusively, um, filled with former familiars, whether they be from Pact of the Chain or the Standard Spell, because one of the advantage the advantage that the creature gets beyond its uh, beyond its type being altered is it becomes a considerably uh, more intelligent. It becomes sa- uh, sapient or sentient, I should say, uh, similar to the Awakened spell, and additionally. Oh, that, that, that's something I should mention, is the intelligence, wisdom, and charisma will be adjusted as per the Awakened spell for these uh, familiars if they don't have a stat that's comparable already. Adi- so, they, they get to live a lot longer, and they're now sentient, and even after their their, their uh, master is it dies... The uh, familiar retains its intelligence and retains the longevity of its existence. 
sometimes they uh, seek a, a new master. But in many cases, uh, they are free to explore the uh, the, universe, the verse at large on their own. Because there are so many that have uh, have uh, lost their masters over uh, countless generations and the like, a a organization called the Freed Ones has uh, been established, where it. Any familiar, regardless as to their uh, whether they're good, evil, or somewhere in between, are welcome to join their numbers, and they seek to promote um, a uh, a more uh, a more balanced relationship between the casters and the familiar, the spellcasters and the familiars, because in many cases, familiars are. Uh, treated as little more than slaves and servants to their uh, their masters and now that they these ones are freed of the such restraints they feel that they it's their duty to ensure that their um their their brethren ha- have the cho- have cho- the choice have the dis- the ability to make this make the call as to like whether they want like whether they want to be put in a in in a deadly circumstance and the like or to be perform menial labor on a day by day uh, on a day by day basis for a um for all intents and purposes a a arcane tyrant per se in some instances uh so this organization like i said it, it promotes it promotes equality in in the familiar uh the familiar uh, master relationships additionally they 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 free familiars that they feel are being oppressed <laughs> and the the way they accomplish that typically is through assassinating the uh the caster that's linked to the familiar so uh beware if you uh treat your familiar incorrect uh, like improperly or incorrectly or you mistreat them in some fashion because the freed ones may be watching and they may not take a liking to the the way you're treating uh said familiar uh I'm thinking that there might be some plot hooks if uh, one of the players chooses to either play a warlock or a wizard with with a familiar, where the they're being watched and observed to see what how that relationship's working, and if the relationship in their in the opinion of the freed ones is sour, uh, the uh, the adventurer may have a so that the, may have some visitors in the middle of the night with uh ne- with very unpleasant intentions for them additionally uh the party might be hired to rescue a familiar a free one or or something similar maybe there's a magical magical items that are specifically for familiars that they would that this organization wants to get tracked down um there, there's new maybe they want the party to uh get into politics and and promote uh their agenda who knows regardless there's a there's a few plot hooks there and i kind of like the idea that they're the the adventurers are walking you know, along, walking somewhere in like in a, a maw station or what have you, and they come across like a talking weasel or something like that, uh, working at working at a stall, and as it's talk, as they're talking to it, they come to the realization this was like there was a wizard that once once owned this familiar, but now that that wizard is no more. He's just trying to make a living, just like every other uh, sentient being in the verse. I think that's about all I wanted to say on the on the matter for now. I haven't really um, gone into depth as to the Freed One organization. I'm certain that there, uh, there might be a follow-up video eventually, uh, where I add a bit more content or develop the, that faction a bit further. 
it would probably be uh, just a glossed over and set because the the foundation's already there. Aden additionally, I haven't decided what I want to do about the familiars in Strixhaven yet. Um, the the reason I mention that is there are three feats in uh, in Strixhaven that get you a familiar. And I think it's really cool the way they did their uh, backgrounds where you get a, a free feat associated with it. I wish there was more like that, more content like that. Um, personally, I think every background should give a feat, but the problem is a lot of feats would have to either be created or you'd have to try to mix and match where they belong and you know, while taking away the um, background features, obviously. Uh, so those three familiars, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them, whether I'm going to permit the, say that Strixhaven somewhere exists somewhere in the verse on some planet, in which case you have to go there to, to learn that, or whether I want to, to allow anyone to take those feats and possibly gain those familiars or whether the, I'll just, uh, stick those familiars under the, uh, pact of the chain since they are slightly more powerful than your standard familiar and somewhat on par with the, uh, with, with, with the pseudo dragon and sprite and the like. Anyways, I've rambled on for uh, 26 and a half minutes. I'd love to hear your, anyone's thoughts on these uh, ideas. Uh, hopefully you, you found the entire rambling about familiars to be informative. I'd love to hear what other people, uh, how they changed the rules up for familiars in their settings as uh i like as i said before i feel that, that they're underused and underpowered in D D, and they should be like a mainstay they should be uh, like a familiar on a wizard a wizard's shoulder or at at their le at their side is something that should always be seen in my opinion in a D D game or at least next to, and it's un it should be unusual for a uh, wizard not to have one. Regardless, uh, till next week, I hope that all your 20s uh, roll critical, and uh, have a nice day.